Welcome to Following, a weekly podcast where we will discuss how to follow Jesus. Christianity is not an event you attend, it's a life you live. Join us each week as we dive into the intersection of real-life circumstances and the life-changing Word of God. Come, follow Jesus with us. Hey, welcome back to Following. Uh, we're here this this evening, ready to get back into John. It's been a couple of weeks since we've mm-hmm. since we've looked at John, taking a couple of weeks off. Uh, but yeah, glad to be back here. Glad to be looking uh, back at this wonderful text. Mm-hmm. Um, John is one of my favorite books in the yeah, Bible. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really good hearing it uh, being preached. And um, listeners, if you're not you know part of our congregation, we'd love to invite you to go online and check out those sermons. Um, but yeah, well, let's let's get into the text. It's John chapter 3, verses 31 through 36. So Phil, why don't you go ahead and read that for us? Okay. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, of that he bears witness, and no man receives his witness. He who has received his witness has set his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Hmm. Okay, so um, in your, your message, you, you kind of had this, this main theme or idea of clinging desperately. That was the mm-hmm. title of the sermon, to cling desperately to Jesus. And I loved the story you used about how you were uh, on that raft and mm-hmm. afraid to get sucked under the water. And if you didn't cling desperately to that uh, raft, I thought that was super helpful to understand what that looks like mm-hmm. and, and clinging desperately. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about this, this, uh, in this episode is uh, addressing this, how do we cling desperately? Like it's one thing to say, Hey, cling desperately to Jesus, but mm-hmm. what is that? What does that even mean? How does that, how does that happen? So um, I guess, first of all, let's, let's just answer that question of what does it mean to cling desperately? Yeah, I, th- I think it's another way of, of talking about faith, another way of talking about trusting in Christ, relying on Christ, mm-hmm. uh, coming to Christ, abiding in Christ. All of these terms in John's gospel seem to be angling towards the same reality of a a, f- a confidence in Jesus, a but even but but more than that, a, a belief that He is indeed the Son of God. Mm-hmm. There is a recognition and glad-hearted submission to Him as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world. Um, and so, when we talk about clinging desperately to Jesus, there has to come a point in your life where you realize you need Jesus. And you have to have Jesus. Like, mm. He becomes an all-consuming desire for you. You know, you know, in that story we're talking about, the, in that moment, the raft was the only thing keeping me above the water. Mm. And if it weren't for the raft, then I would have slipped under the waves and I wouldn't have been able to escape it. And so for me, the only thing I was thinking about, the, the, the thing that was driving every thought, every action, every feeling in my body and my mind in that moment was i can't let go of the raft the yeah. raft i have to have the raft and and i think that single minded devotion mm-hmm. that single minded need and all consuming conviction i have to have jesus mm-hmm. the, there's just an utter persuasion in your heart that jesus is the son of god that he is the savior of the world that he alone can connect me to God, that he alone can take away my sin and make me right with God. There's, there's something about faith that is, it, it is believing that he is the son of God, but it's, it, it goes beyond that. There is a, there, there, there's a transformation of your heart that you've become utterly convinced mm. he is indispensable yeah and necessary and if you don't have him all is lost yeah that's good um so i guess just as we continue with this conversation about clinging desperately to jesus what we mean by that is placing your faith in jesus Mm -hmm. is saying that he 
he is better than anything else than anything else mm-hmm. we can try to satisfy ourselves with. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of what that looks like practically. Um, and I kind of want to address what are some things that we cling to Jesus or that, sorry, that we cling to instead of Jesus. Yeah. Or, or, or even it's, it's almost like, um, sometimes I don't know that it, it becomes like we cling to that in place of Jesus because we think that's going to save us. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we've become so dulled and desensitized to the danger that we're in mm-hmm. that we don't even realize that we're about to drown. Like yeah. we, we've, we're, we're almost lackadaisical in our spiritual lives. Like our mortal bodies are dying. Like we, we are going to die mm-hmm. unless Jesus returns. And so in that regard, we are in this, this river of mortality. Our feet are, are seized by the, the net underneath the water, and we don't seem concerned about it. Mm. We're, we're just indifferent to, to it, and we're content to just kind of float along as if we don't have a care in the world. And we might you know, reach out and grab a piece of driftwood as it as it goes by if if our face goes under the water for a moment we kind of have a startling Mm -hmm. you know maybe a you about drive off the road and you kind of have that that surge of adrenaline that kind of wakes you up like oh my goodness i could have died Mm -hmm. you know but then that quickly passes and we're we're just bored Mm -hmm. indifferent um it's almost like we're intoxicated with the world and we to the extent that we can't think clearly and soberly about the danger. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think the reason why we're so intoxicated or dulled by those things is because we we're constantly bar- like bombarded with all of these mm-hmm. different, um, like, okay, just to continue with this, this imagery of, of the raft in the, in the river. In that moment, you're not reaching out and grabbing like a, you know, a bottle that's going by. Yeah. Right. You're not trying to, to grab some other things, but in life, the the immediate sense of danger doesn't seem to be there. Right. And so that we are grabbing, we are reaching out and grabbing other things like, like sex or money, or we're clinging to our youth or entertainment. Uh, right. The great temptation is to say that those things are actually better than, than this mm-hmm. raft than Jesus. Um, so how do we, if, if the immediate sense of, of danger isn't in front of our eyes, First of all, I think we, that, that ought to be changed. That needs to be fixed. Secondly, the question is, okay, how, how do we let go of those things? Like if we know that the, if we can fix our, 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 uh, or rearrange our senses in a, in, in, you know, in a sense and see the impending danger that's right in front of us, right? Mm-hmm. Death, that we're not immortal. Then what do we do? How, how do we let go of these other temptations, these, these vices that we try to grab onto to please ourselves? Yes, I think first, it, there's, there's two different kinds of people here we're talking about in the river. There's the, the believer mm-hmm. in Christ who seems to have lost a sense of the importance of, of faith in Christ. Mm-hmm. And then there's the unbeliever who's completely oblivious to the, any danger whatsoever and doesn't believe any of this. And I think for the unbeliever, if, if you're listening to this, um, and you don't see any sense of danger, I think you need to pray and ask God to open your eyes. Because the, the scripture talks about in, in 2 Corinthians 4 that the enemy blinds our minds so that we can't see the light of the glory of Christ. And when you can't see the light of the glory of Christ, when you can't see the beauty and the wonder and the goodness and the, the, the glory of Jesus, you don't treasure him. You don't go to him. You don't rest in him. You don't have confidence in him. You're indifferent to him. And so if that's you and you're blind and you just have no sense of, eh, pray for God to open your eyes. Or if you know someone like that, then you need to pray and ask God to intervene in their life because they can't see until God opens their eyes. But for the believer, I, I think, um, one thing that you can do, and I've read a lot of the old, like some of the Puritans and, and others, talk about contemplating your mortality. Mm. Like it's a good thing to think about dying at times. You know, funerals are a good place to 
contemplate what I don't have any guarantee of tomorrow, Mm -hmm. you know? And, And so taking some time to really stop and think at any day, like in, in college, my best friend died of a brain aneurysm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we were young, 20, 21 years old. I mean, it was a freak accident. Like, how does that happen? Why did that happen? We're not guaranteed any moment. Um, so take time to, to think about your own mortality and remember you're in the river remember take opportunities to kind of let that water splash into your face and kind of wake you up to the reality that there there is a danger mm-hmm. um and you need Jesus so i think that's the first step i think a second step would be to to clarify well no this isn't the right word to cultivate an an uh, an the aim of your heart towards Jesus. So like take a hard look at what your heart is aimed at Mm. right now. Like what's shaping your heart? What's priority in your heart? What, what is it that you, that's important to you? What has captured your affection? Like, what is it that, that you delight in? I mean, just think about it and write it down. Talk to somebody about it. Why does that thing capture you? Why is that why is that so important to you? Why is that driving everything you do? Why is your family aiming at that thing, whatever that thing might be, whether it's sports or fame or money or a better vacation next year or more, you know, better clothes or better house or a better reputation? I, I, there's there's a whole host. I mean, what is it you're aiming at? Why has that uh, captured your attention and, and and think how 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 empty that is, and and remember, like when Jesus talks about, you can trade your soul for that, mm. but is that worth it? The, the, I guess what I'm trying to say, I feel like I'm rambling. That you you have to you have to force your mind to think about the danger, yeah, as a way of motivating yourself to hang on. You can't let yourself go to sleep. You know, it's almost like uh, like hypothermia. Like if you're you're freezing to death, there comes a point where you start to drift off to sleep. Mm-hmm. And if you if you it, it would be easier to just drift off to sleep. But if you do that, you're dead. And so if you you have to keep yourself awake, you have to force yourself to to think, even when it's hard to think. Mm-hmm. And and I think sometimes saving well, ongoing faith in the life of a Christian is like that. There yeah. there has to be that. I've got to stay awake. Mm. I've got to keep hanging on to Jesus. I've got to keep trusting Jesus. Not because you're going to lose your salvation, but, but because it's so easy to wreck parts of our lives mm. and make ourselves and others around us miserable by sinful choices, by, by not clinging desperately to Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, and so I guess kind of th- the question is then, how do we practically do this? Like, what are we supposed to? Okay, so we have this great temptation to um, sort of waste our lives. Mm, that's being, a good way of phrasing it. Being distracted by all sorts of things that keep us from thinking about our mortality, that keep us from thinking about death. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think right, right now, the biggest distraction in my life uh, is probably social media. Like, it's, just, it's, way easy, it's way too easy today to distract yourselves with mundane, mm-hmm. meaningless um, videos that you continue to scroll through Um, so what are we supposed to do like obviously put those things aside but what are we going to put in place of those so that we can think about our mortality so that we can think about things that matter so that we're not wasting our lives with these meaningless things i think i think like paul says in timothy to exercise yourself to godliness to discipline yourself Mm -hmm. for godliness because it has benefit in this life and in the life to come so we can't just wait until we feel like believing, mm. until we feel the affections. Like, we have to shape our hearts by means of action. And because the fire sometimes 
you think about if a fire in your heart is the fire will grow cold until you put wood on that fire. So how do we put wood on that fire of faith? How do we keep the faith burning brightly? How do we keep the the passion for Jesus burning brightly? I think through the spiritual disciplines, these practices that form our hearts, that shape our minds, that shape our souls. You know, and there's there's lots of different spiritual practices out there. Like here in our church, we have six foundational ones that we that we abide by. You know, praying, giving, washing yourself with the word, loving, uh, which is an expression of being holy, mm-hmm. um, mentoring others, and resting. So those those practices, I think, are foundational because you see them throughout the scripture. But there's other things, like if you're struggling with self-control, fasting mm-hmm. is really good to teach yourself self-control, that I am not not, not just in Not just in food areas, like... Yeah, but I think specifically in the food well, area. Well, yeah, sorry. But, but I, I can see what that's... So what, what I meant was fasting from food can teach you self-controls. In, yes, in yes, other yes, areas, yes. but not just food. Yes, correct. So fasting yes. can teach you how to control your sexual desires yes. and so on. Yes, because what you're doing is you're, you're saying, I am not a slave right. to whatever desire I have. I can feel the desire, and I can say no to the desire, and I have to sacrifice the, ple- the momentary pleasure of slaking that desire's thirst mm-hmm. for an even greater pleasure that comes in knowing Jesus Christ. And so um, by fasting from food, you teach yourself self-control. You help your heart to prioritize a greater good later rather than an instant good now. It's yeah. not as good. So um, so those there, there's, there's different spiritual practices. There's some really good books out there that will help you. Like I just finished a book by John Mark Coleman called Practicing the Way mm-hmm. that I think was really helpful uh, in that regard. Um, just focusing in on how do I walk in the ways of Jesus, doing these things, reading my Bible, meditating on my Bible, praying in different kinds of ways, spending time with other believers, practicing hospitality, giving sacrificially, all of these things, they have a reason for why you're doing it. And when you're doing it consistently, it's kind of like guardrails kind of being placed upon your life to help you stay Hmm. on the road and not go off into the ditch. Because it's so easy as a Christian to kind of slide off into the ditch when you drift when you drift to sleep. Right. And you but the guardrails are there to kind of bump you and Mm -hmm. wake you up and keep you in the middle of the road. And so, you know, put those spiritual disciplines into practice. If you don't know what they are or which ones to, you know, Don Whitney's book, um, yeah. Spiritual Disciplines, is a really, yeah. really good book on that. Um, the Comer book I just mentioned, Practicing the Way, is a really good book on that. The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by Comer is also really good on that. Uh, yeah, Whitney also wrote one, uh, I think it's just titled Prayer or Praying or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's a really good one. Yeah, there, there's several, there's several out there I'm trying to... Praying the Bible. Yeah, it's Praying the Bible. That's yeah. what it is. There's several out there that are that I have been reading of late that have been extremely helpful for me. Um, so just you know, pursue a real relationship with Jesus, mm-hmm. abide in Jesus, cling to Jesus, hold on to Jesus. But to do that, you have got to prevent yourself from falling asleep. You've got to prevent yourself from being distracted by mm-hmm. the world. You've got to present, prevent yourself from thinking that you're invincible. Yeah. You you have to keep your your mind fixed on Jesus and your desperate need of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But but I do want to make this caveat. I don't I don't want us to leave this podcast episode without the the reality is sometimes it feels so hard to hang on. Mm-hmm. We want to hang on. But sometimes we're so tired and we're so worn out by suffering and we're so t- we're so beaten down by persecution or, or whatever it may be you're facing. I want you to know this. Jesus doesn't let go of you. Mm. We are clinging to him. We want him. We need him. We are, we are angling our heart at him. But know this. He will never, ever let you go. Uh, it John is, 6. Yeah, mm. it, the Father's will is that all that he gives to Jesus will come to Jesus, and the one who comes to Jesus will never be cast out, but mm-hmm. will be raised up. And that is a tremendously comforting promise. Yeah. He won't let you go. Mm. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, according to Romans 8. Mm-hmm. Nothing. 
not anything. And yeah. so he won't let us go. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. And I think that's probably a good place to, to wrap this episode up. I'm really excited for John 6. It's, Me too. I can't wait to get like, there. Yeah. It's, it sure is taking its time, it seems like. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, with, with that, we'll, we'll close this episode out. Uh, is there anything you, you'd like to, to say on top of that? Or Keep following Jesus. Yeah, keep following Jesus. Thanks for listening. Thanks again for tuning in to Following. We truly hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. And if you did enjoy this episode, we'd ask that you go and hit that follow button and share this podcast with your friends and your family. If you'd like to hear more on this text, visit the link in the description and you can watch or listen to this sermon on this text. For more resources like this, go to hopeformacon.com. Until next week, keep following Jesus.